Donald Trump once again reminded us how crazy he is. So with the current U.S. government doing very little to curtail the ongoing bombardment of Gaza by a right-wing Israeli government, it can be easy to forget just how maniacal the opposition is. But Donald Trump on a radio show yesterday uh, reminded us just of that very thing. So I'm going to get to the clip. I want to share first this related story that also came out today. Jared Kushner, who of course was one of uh, Trump's most senior advisors, often working on issues of foreign policy, says that Gaza's waterfront property could be very valuable. Jared Kushner here, who very likely would find himself in a future Trump administration, considering he is, again, married to Trump's daughter, is uh, relishing in the investment opportunities that Gaza provides. So uh, Jared Kushner praised the very valuable potential of Gaza's waterfront property and suggested Israel should remove civilians while it cleans up the Strip. The former property dealer, married to Trump's daughter, made the comments in an interview at Harvard University. If you read through the article, like he he talks about Palestinians like they're sacks of potatoes. Oh, we should just move them from here. Or maybe we should move them over here. How about they should be allowed to live in their homes? How about they should be allowed to have their own state? Which, of course, he also disagrees with. Responding to a question about whether Palestinians should have their own state, Kushner described the proposal as a super bad idea that would essentially be rewarding an act of terror. Yeah, but bombing over 30,000 civilians, half of them children, in an open-air prison of Gaza that Israel already controls the borders of, that's perfectly sane behavior. It's important to be reminded, it's not just Trump who's crazy, it's the people around him who were crazy back then when he was in power, and will be even crazier next time when they feel emboldened if they win. So it, this is, you know, it, it's insane. It's it's far to the right of where Biden is, and Biden is already on the right when it comes to this issue, as he is not uh, clearly doing what is necessary to put an end to one of his strongest allies and their ongoing destruction of Palestinians. But let's get to Trump's comments here. So he is speaking with... Um, What's his name? Seb Gorka on radio show, America First radio program. So he was asked about the increasing criticism of uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, discussing in particular Chuck Schumer, who recently came out saying that uh, Netanyahu is an obstacle to peace. Here are these comments. So I couldn't go. Could you explain why is it seemingly that this administration, uh, including Chuck Schumer in the Senate, so yeah. hate the man that Israel chose as their prime minister? Why, why do the Democrats hate Bibi Netanyahu? I actually think they hate Israel. Yes. I don't think they hate him. I think they hate Israel. And the Democrat Party hates Israel. And the Democrat Party, if you remember, when many Israeli representatives, including Netanyahu, when they came to the country trying, begging, begging, at that time President Obama, please don't make the Iran nuclear deal, which is a disaster and was a disaster. And I ended it. But unfortunately, they didn't do anything with the ending of it. I, I ended it and would have had a new deal made with Iran. It would have been good for everybody and there would have been no nuclear weapons. You know, they're very close to getting a nuclear weapon right now. Yeah. I I just got to pause there because of how how crazy this he tore up the Iran deal which arguably if you speak to experts in this field is arguably the best thing that Barack Obama did was the Iran deal. It ensured that Iran would not be able to produce a, a nuclear weapon. Trump comes in, rips it up, and now he's complaining that Iran is close to building a nuclear weapon. If that first of all from what I understand, that isn't true. Israel, or Iran is continuing to abide by the deal, even though it's torn up with the hopes that it's going to that they're going to breach that deal again. But if that were true, it would be because you tore the deal up. Like the and the, the total lack, like there's no connection there in his mind that is made between him tearing up the deal and now Iran being closer to producing a nuclear weapon. Like it's just. This is all within, you know, a sentence that he is both revealing 
the issue at hand and that he is the center of that problem. It, it's it's just, you know, it's Trump. So people just excuse it. Oh, it's Donald Trump. He's an idiot. This idiot is trying to become the president again. And so far, looking at polling, he is the favorite. Yes. And once they have that, it becomes a different uh, form of negotiation, a much more difficult negotiation. But they, I, I really believe they hate Israel. And they also see a lot of votes. Don't forget, when you see those Palestinian uh, marches, even I, I'm amazed at how many people are in those marches. And guys like Schumer see that. And to him, it's votes. I think it's votes more than anything else, because he was always pro-Israel. He's very anti-Israel. Now, any Jewish person that votes for Democrats uh, hates their religion. They hate everything about Israel, and they should be ashamed of themselves, because Israel will be destroyed. You have Iran now making a nuclear weapon. None of that would have happened with me. That's a big thing. With me, Iran was broke. They were absolutely stone cold. The big point here that he's making, if you are Jewish and you vote Democrat, you hate your religion. This is coming from somebody who clearly is not Jewish. You know, Jewish people are often at at the center of many of these human rights groups that are fighting for the rights of Palestinians, that are fighting for free Palestine, that are, are fighting for the ability to Palestinians to either, either have their own state or, you know, the ultimate hope being that Palestinians and Israelis can just live in one state in peace. They're the ones often at the center of these movements. There's Jewish Voice for Peace, Independent Jewish Voices, uh, Bet Salem, a, an Israeli-based human rights organization. So to try and, and again, Trump, Trump doesn't, he doesn't care about these issues. He doesn't, I'm not sure how much he knows, doesn't know. The point is, he makes himself the focus of every single issue. Whatever he views as a way to better prop himself up, he's going to say it. And he very rarely faces repercussions now for anything he says. Because there is just so much crap all the time, it's impossible to keep track of it all. Imagine Joe Biden said this from his perspective. You know, if, uh, imagine... Joe Biden, in any situation, whether in a speech, whether talking to the media, said that uh, any Jewish person that votes for Republicans um, hates themselves, hates their religion. Can you imagine if he said that? Yet here is Trump saying it, and this is getting very little news. You know, there's just one news story here, a couple of the news story, but it's going to be forgotten tomorrow. We're going to all move on. Yet if, if Joe Biden said this, it would be, you know, round the clock coverage for the next, you know, 10 months. It is just, it is wild what this clown gets away with. And it, this is why it's important to, to recenter, you know, when anything like this pops up. It, it's important to recontextualize just how completely maniacal Donald Trump is and how things would not get better in any situ, in any way under a Trump presidency compared to what it is now. There are many complaints now. I've done plenty of videos discussing Joe Biden and the many faults that he has and the obvious ways that he could put pressure on the Israeli government. And this is, again, not me sitting in my chair at home talking about this. I'm talking about looking at what experts are saying, looking at what people are, the understanding that the U.S. government has, the the, the power that they have over the Israeli government in terms of weapon sales or in terms of weapons, in terms of support, funding, various pressure points that the U.S. government has that Joe Biden simply is not taking advantage of. You can look at those things, understand those criticisms, and still hopefully be be able to understand that under Donald Trump, things would just get much worse.